I am hiding my identity to tell this story because it is my life story and I am a very known and powerful personality. I know God is ever forgiving but, I have great doubt this time, whether God will forgive me this terrible sin. In case you think I spoke out because I have started suffering and currently in great physical trouble, the opposite is in fact the case, I am currently very comfortable and living my best possible physical life. Anything I want and everyone I wish to have I can get, as long as you have prize, in fact, I, with my group are among the people underground controlling the world affairs to a very reasonable extent. These days, success doesn't take much, like never before, access to extraordinary things abound, and when you look, it won't take long for you to begin to see as long as you know the right buttons to press and the consequences attached to it. There are two sides of my story, the physical and the mysteriously spiritual, I would dwell very much on the spiritual side as it is where my great misery lays. I wish you listen, I don't know who to talk to, I just want to share it with people who don't know me, to ease off my mind, reducing the hellish trauma I go through every day in my innermost being. Please, do listen, you can comment and suggest to me about your opinion, also remember to subscribe to the channel you are watching this from, because more will be coming your way. Uswanda's TV is the closest media to me that I can trust to keep my identity private. Few years ago I was absolutely nobody, I mean I was trapped in the rat race of working 9 to 5 job as a pizza delivery guy in my city. It wasn't the best of jobs but I was managing with it, living with my younger sister in a one room apartment. My dad lives in the village, works as a farmer, my mom is late, she died while I was very young leaving only my dad. That's just it for my family. I needed to do more with my career as I had a lot of responsibilities. But since I graduated from university as a civil engineer, I haven't found any work relating to the course I studied. Therefore I sought for any other mini job opportunity to earn some livelihood, that was what landed me as a pizza delivery guy. One day I got an order from someone living in Brilliance Estate, a very well known estate in the city where I live, known as residence for very affluent and powerful people. The voice on the phone was that of a young man, he told me, once you get to the gate, call me with the number and I will tell the security to grant you access. Getting there, I didn't waste time with the security protocol, since I did exactly as he told me, I went direct to block a residence, according to his description and knocked on the door, a gorgeous lady opened the door, are you the delivery guy? Yes ma'am, Sir Gregory ordered for pizza and this was the address, I replied. You are right, Sir Gregory is my boss. I looked at my phone. It was ringing and it was Sir Gregory calling, he told me to give the pizza to her. I didn't waste much time, I delivered it and went back to my bike, I had two more deliveries to complete. Suddenly the lady came out again and gave me a signal to come. I came down from my bike and went to her, my boss wants to see you, she said. I was surprised, why would he want to see me? The interior was very beautiful and classy just as the exterior portrait. The lady told me to sit down on the sofa therein and relax, asking whether I cared for anything. I was thirsty so I told her to get me some water to drink which she did. Immediately she offered me some water, a door in the house extending to another room opened and a man came out. When he turned, I was perplexed. That was James my classmate, though I was two classes older than him. We exchanged very warm greeting and he told the lady to get me anything I want. I felt more relaxed because even though I was his senior back in those days we were in secondary school, we were still friends. He asked me how my life had been going, which of course I shared my challenges, he gave me his number and told me to call him anytime, in fact he showed very deep concern to help me become better, how he has managed to become a very successful businessman and politician really baffled me at such a young age. When, when I went back to my workplace that day, I was given a suspension letter by my boss for not delivering on time as scheduled, and complaint from customers, I could have felt sad and miserable but, I felt relieved, because I saw it as a golden opportunity to consistently meet my old friend and know whether I could find a better opportunity from him. Surprisingly he gave me a very open hand, unlike some people I used to know before now that once they become wealthy they begin giving their poor old friend some kind of negligence attitude, he was very warm. Sometimes he invites me over for parties and very big clubhouses, where we drink and have some fun. In fact for a period of about 3 months, I wasn't doing any work, but was living far more comfortable than when I was working, settling all my bills courtesy of tips he gives me from. I watched his attitude and I understood that I can become wealthy too like him because he has liberal mind, 
and was willing to assist me. So one day, I went to visit him, while we were together I discovered he loved Hennessy wine very much, so, out of the money he generously gives me sometimes, I was able to afford some very expensive Hennessy wine and an expensive golden watch, I wrapped it up and took it to him, I presented it as a token of appreciation for all his generosity. I also pleaded with him that I really wish to upgrade my level to the standard that suits his class, because out of all his group of friends, many that I have met in parties where he invited me, I was the poorest and the least relevant but probably the most educated, because I later learned as we discussed that he dropped out of school. After I made my request, he was silent for a couple of minutes before he said, I would prefer you remain like this bro, if you want I can give you some money to start up a business and run on your own, but, as for becoming as wealthy as myself, and most of my friends, it requires a type of strong heart and mind. I was really very desperate to be very wealthy so I was out for anything, including risking my own life, so I said to him, boss, as you are seeing me, I am ready to do anything, that is requires, I am a man, I believe strength and integrity is tested, just put me through the process you use in checking out whether I have a strong mind or not, if I fail, then forget about helping me, when I mean I am out, for this, I mean it with my whole being. After saying this he giggled, and told me to drink up, that he has seen the statement he was looking for. After drinking with him that day, while I was about to go, he told me to come back in the next seven days with few clothes that we will be traveling to somewhere. Within the seven days, I really saw a lot of reasons to have very strong mind for whatever will come. First, my family is known as the most wretched in our community. In our community my father's house was the oldest and the most wretched looking, that was a house left for him by his grandfather, he was the only son, now he is old, and is suffering from a very terrible disease. My younger brother, got into trouble at school, he was involved in students' rights and is being held in detention by the police then later transferred to a maximum security prison. All this happened before I met my friend, but, I didn't want to bore him with many issues of my life, I feel I needed to have so much money and influence directly under my control to overcome all these great challenges of my life, my sister is still in school, I felt, I needed to do more for myself and family. On the day I left, I told my sister I was going for a business trip, that I don't have a specific time I will come back but all I know was that I will be back soon, I gave her a reasonable amount of money to take care of herself, I told her my personal ATM pin where I had my life savings, in case something happens to me, though I didn't tell her like that, I just told her, in case I spend more time than usual. She was feeling nervous but, I assured her that all was well. I went to my friend's house, together we went on SUV convoy to the airport, where we boarded a private jet, that was his private jet. While in the SUV convoy he spoke to me last, he told me that, he remembered my last words, how I said I was ready and brave enough to go through some test of strong heart, that it was the test I would be going through our destination. While in the jet, I was feeling a little bit nervous for the first time, like the fear of the unknown or what would become of me. As the jet landed in another airport, I won't mention name, for private reasons, that is, our destination, we all came down, some other group of about five men came and welcomed us. I went into a white SUV, but my friend, being the only person I know went into another SUV, black waving at me to follow those strange men. The first thing I noticed was that they only smiled and showed emotions when my friend was greeting them with me, immediately I entered with them, they were no more smiling, they were strangely quiet, I tried to ask them few questions, like what their name was, where we were going, but none of them spoke, it was really strange. Another terrible strange thing I remembered was about 5 minutes in the ride, I was in the middle of two men, I started feeling very numb, that is, an unusual weakness came upon me, it wasn't like sleepy. No, it was like being fully conscious but losing the ability to control any part of your body anymore. It was though the more I breathed the air therein the more the feeling increases to the point that I wanted to scream but I couldn't even open my mouth. I can't control any part of my body except my eyes. The man sitting by my left looked at me with such cruelty in his eyes, he waved his hands in front of my eyes to check whether my eyes were still conscious, and for the first time he said to the others, it has started working brothers, I heard all of them chuckle very loud. We drove for few hours, arriving in a very large compound, then I was laying helplessly on my laps as the two men sitting beside me was holding me with one of their hands to prevent me from dangling out of control whenever there was gallop. When we arrived, 
I was blindfolded, one man carried me on his shoulders into a room, while we were moving, I could hear people screaming, some pleading for mercy, I was hearing stabs, spilling of blood, wipes, in fact it seemed as though I was being taken through a hellish hole. We got to a room and the man threw me very roughly on the ground, I didn't have control over my body so I fell with the full force of gravity, my head banged on the ground and I passed out. Half splash of water woke me up from unconsciousness, the first people I saw standing before me were three men, all with knives and hooded like exclusionists of medieval period, they were very muscular, my memory came back rapidly, I recall that I have lost control over my whole body but on the sight of those men, reflexes of survival to fight or flee overwhelmed me I turned to my back there's an open door leading to where I don't know, I tried lifting my hands to position very well to run. And it responded. I stood up with the highest speed within my might and took off, I didn't even look around my goal was to exit through the door that was open before me leading to where I don't even know, as I ran, I fell, because my legs slipped off because of pool of blood on the floor, I fell with my face, I rose my head and looked at my, hands, it was stained with blood, that was when I looked around, prop, on the ground where blood and dismembered human remains, lots of them littered all over the place, immediately the terrible smell of rotten corpse became very obvious, the three men moved slowly as though they knew I would never make it outside they grabbed me two by the hands, the other by my two legs, they carried me back to my initial position. I was already urinating on myself, when I saw the shape blade these men have on their hands, I was very helpless, I am already weak, they were too overpowering, even in my full strength, I can't combat these three men, with such a very shape blade and bulky muscles. One of them, the smallest, opened his hood, I recognized him very well, he was Gregory, my so-called friend, he held my neck up as though about to cut off my head, I started pleading with him not to kill me, that I am willing to do anything to remedy my life, there was this evil, emotionless side of him I saw that scared the hell out of me. Being face to face with death is really the most terrifying thing that can occur to any living being, he began cutting, I noticed the first layer of my skin, being ripped off by the blade, yet I was still pleading with him. He suddenly stopped cutting. He looked at me, for some times. I was panting heavily this time, my heart was beating fast, so much that my breath was trying to catch up with it, I was sweating profusely too, why I didn't pass out that moment, I never can tell. He asked me, you will die, today, and we will feast on you or you serve our lord and master, who is the prince over this heaven. I quickly replied, I will serve any prince, I will, even if it is devil himself. He poured spit on me, and laughed, fool, so you are willing to join us in this paradise of hell. I looked at him and said, yes, loudly. He ordered the other two more big, muscular men, take him through, so that he will have a feast. I was dragged by the other two men, into an opening. It was a graveyard, where there were so many tombs, a circle was drawn with spill of salt, I was squatting in the middle of it, necked, with very few inches of away from my body, these men said to me, no matter what you see, no matter what you hear, don't step out of this circle else your entire family will be wiped off from this world. They left me there all alone. After two days, rain fell, I was so weak that I wished I was even beheaded, rain fell on me, the scourging sun heated me hard, I was starting to have some mental twist, like licking my own sweat to find water, I even ate my excrement. Within the circle, from the day I came there till five days, I was given no food, no water. On, on the sixth day, a man came to me with a bow, and a glass, he opened the bowl and set it before me, within the circle, inside the bowl were raw meat comprising of, human eyeball, ears, eyes and five fingers, in the glass cup contains blood, he told me to drink and eat, he left. I was reluctant, but the hunger instinct in me was very wild. I grasped the bowl and within few minutes, it and drank up everything present. The night of that day was very terrible, I saw horrible visions of series of demons, both while I feel asleep and while I was awake, I saw ghosts roaming about in the cemetery, it was as if the food opened my eyes to a certain unusual frequency that a normal human eyes doesn't see, because I recalled seeing some very strange colors and objects that is not natural, that is when you know that the colors you are seeing now, which are the colors of the rainbow are very tiny colors that there is a the existence, there are some indescribable terrifying colors that cannot be explained, trying to explain it to you, is like trying to tell a blind man how red is. From the sixth day till the tenth day I wasn't myself, it was as though I was in a very indescribable trance, which on several occasions I saw things that made me want to pluck out my eyeballs. On the eleventh day, 
two hooded men came and dragged me into a large hall. Some ladies came and bathed me. They dressed me up with expensive red coat and shoes and made me walk on a red carpet while flowers was being sprayed as I walked into another large hall. It was like a huge dining, as though I was being welcomed into a court group. The sighted surprisingly were prominent men, some well-known celebrities, politicians, captain of industries, and academia, all men I never dreamt in my entire life I can ever have the opportunity to meet, dressed in red coat like me, they all stood up as I came in, they said, welcome in unison, and all of us sat down. There was deep silence, very strange, all was staring at a big symbol at the other end of the table, it was drawn with light. Suddenly, a little breeze started blowing, candles set on the table by themselves lit, they started chanting a strange song, that as they sang, it seemed as if I have heard it before, though that was my first time of physically hearing it, I joined them in singing it, Lightbringer, the Lord of this heaven, something, 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 I don't want to say more than this because it is a spell, we use in summoning, Moloch, the Lord, in charge of our heaven. As they chanted it, the breeze intensified, the whole light went off again, until the wall where the symbol was, where everyone focused on was torn open, revealing Moloch, his likeness was like that of a dreadful bull, with muscular man's body, his eyes was blazing with fury fire, and his body was like a bronze, when he opened his mouth to speak blood drippled out revealing his teeth like that of a dragon. He has wings stretched out like that of a bat. He said to me, Welcome to my heaven, from today henceforth, you agree to bow to me and give up your soul unto making my kingdom come. For the first time I remembered, my background, I remembered about, Christianity, because before now, I have been going to church but not very serious with it, at least I remembered, when Jesus said, What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul, it was as if my life was flashing before my eyes, as though it was the climax of decision, I could have said no but, when I looked around, it was as if I was in hell already, I can't run from them, if I said no, I would die. Terribly, they would just devour me any, perhaps I would be nowhere to be found, but if I say yes, maybe I will have the chance to someday tell this story. Immediately I said, yes. Moloch stretched out its hands towards me and something like light gradually exited from my body and entered into the hands of Moloch, and he disappeared. The next thing that followed was patting, dancing and feasting, but it is important to know that all the meat used there were human meat, some were roast, fried and converted into all manner of delicacies as though it was beef. From then on, I discovered this new strange world, most of the kidnappings were done by these people, they kidnap and eat people, and most of them are powerful and influential people. Even though I am well to do, even though I am very influential, in my heart of heart, I feel scared, I feel terrible, I feel hopeless, I feel used by a force far greater than me. I know that there is a terrible emptiness in me. I don't know who to go to because of my reputation, many of these so-called preachers worship me, so going to them is like, I don't know, so viewers, what should I do? Can God ever forgive me after I have given my soul to Moloch?